Throughout history, armies have sought to control possession of priceless foreign artifacts and treasures from their enemies. But now that the wars with those countries are over, who should rightfully get to keep them? Are they really worth a battle among historians? Here are relics and artifacts that countries are still fighting for. Number 11. Hoa Hakananae Considered to be one of the finest and best preserved Moe statues discovered, and with the distinguished carvings on the back, it's getting harder and harder for the British to keep this thing. It's been associated with what's known as the Island Birdman cult and has been distinguished as a masterpiece and even the finest example of Easter Island sculpting. The Rapa Nui people resent the British for taking one of their statues and often refer to this sculpture as a stolen friend. It's believed to date back to around 1500 AD and certainly isn't the oldest artifact on this list by any means. It stands roughly 7.9 feet tall and weighs a massive 4.9 tons. There's already been some notable damage, and it's believed that at one point in time, the back was painted, but it washed away while being transported on a boat. The British claimed that it was a gift, but no historical record of the gift would indicate that it was. In 2018, the governor of Easter Island formally asked for it back, but it's a slippery slope if the British Museum agrees. Number 10. Nefertiti Bust Thanks to this sculpture, Queen Nefertiti is one of the most well-known queens of all time and an icon of feminine beauty. Because any original artwork of her is highly sought after, Egypt has been wanting Germany to hand her over. It was discovered in 1912 by the German archaeologist Ludwig Borchardt. The claims began to become more public after it was listed in Time magazine as being one of the top 10 plundered artifacts. Intense disputes between Germany and the Egyptians broke out in 1924 and still continue to this day. Germany received many requests to repatriate the sculpture, but every time the request was denied. Head of the Supreme Council for Egyptian Antiquities, Zahi Hawass, is very firm on his stance and claims that it was illegally taken from their country and should be returned. This has led to scientific warfare between the two and Egypt banning exhibitions of their artifacts in certain countries who won't give back their stuff. They have even banned some German archaeologists from entering Egypt. Number 9. The Rosetta Stone when Napoleon's armies came marching through Egypt in 1798, a French soldier discovered this massive stone while walking through the small town called Rosetta. Pierre-Francois Bouchard is credited with this discovery, and soon he realized that it wasn't a normal stone. The French noticed that there was three different languages on this, ancient Greek, Demotic, and most importantly, hieroglyphics. Greek was the ruling language at the time, and the same script was written in these three languages so all government officials could understand it. What was so special about this discovery was that some people already knew how to read ancient Greek, so they were able to translate the text. This meant they could finally figure out what hieroglyphics meant. It was essential for us actually understanding the pharaohs of Egypt and their ancient culture. It's currently on display at the British Museum, so naturally Egypt wants it back. The Parthenon Sculptures While exploring many of the remarkable ancient Greek ruins, you may notice the Parthenon in Athens isn't in the best condition. This enormous temple dedicated to the goddess Athena was certainly one of the finest examples of Doric architecture and completed in the 5th century BC, but it certainly hasn't only been used as a place of worship throughout its history. The Parthenon sees its first violent occurrence when it was looted by the Romans, but eventually, the magnificent artwork known as the Elgin Marbles had ended up in the hands of the British at the British Museum. The Greeks have wanted the artwork back for quite some time now, but the British refused on the grounds that if they did, then everyone would want them to return their stuff back to the country of origin. Number 7. Priam's Treasure A cache of gold and various artifacts were discovered by a German archaeologist Heinrich Schleiman in 1871 to 1873, then again in 1878 to 1879. Due to the link of the Trojan War and King Priam, the treasure has a remarkable value worth fighting for. Not only did he discover the treasure, he also discovered the ruins of Troy. Schleiman was able to smuggle the golden artifacts out of Antolia the first time. Eventually, his wife was caught wearing the jewels of Helen, which ended up getting him sued. Some of the treasure is on display in Istanbul, but the majority of his treasure was kept in Germany. Eventually, it was looted by Russia at the end of the Second World War, but not without Turkey begging for them to get it back. Russia denied the whereabouts of the treasure until the end of the Cold War and makes claims to it on the grounds that Germany basically owed it to them for the destruction of their cities during World War II. This is known as the Russian Cultural Property Law, which has been heavily criticized internationally. Seems like the Germans got a little taste of their own medicine in this case. Number 6. Mona Lisa The most famous and the most sought-after painting among art thieves is certainly the Mona Lisa. It's currently protected behind bulletproof glass at the Louvre Museum, and it's one of Leonardo da Vinci's most celebrated works. 
Ever since it made its first appearance in Napoleon's bedroom in 1800, people have been looking for a way to get their filthy paws on it. It almost seems as though the process of trying to steal it was what made it famous. The mysterious smiling woman was first stolen off the walls by an Italian man, Vincenzo Perugia. He was trying to bring Mona Lisa back home under Italian possession once again. On August 2, 1911, the Louvre worker hid inside the museum and knew that it would be closed on the following Sunday. He kept the paint inside his apartment for two years. Now that's some classy decoration. He claims that it was basically stolen by Napoleon and his motives were patriotic, but he probably didn't know that Leonardo da Vinci created this for the French king Francois I in the first place. Number 5. Scion Treasure Another treasure that was found in Turkey and not returned, the Scion Treasure was a collection of objects and church furnishings. It had been buried in a small mound near the town of Kamluka and ended up in the hands of George Zakos, who then sold it to an American, Robert Woods Bliss. That person then donated it to the Dumbarton Oaks Museum in Washington, D.C. The treasure includes beautiful works of silver and gold and includes objects such as silverware, dishes, crosses, plates, and candlesticks. It's hard to really say that this treasure trove belongs to Turkey in any case, considering that it was created by the Byzantines, who were the Eastern Roman Empire during the 6th century. Number 4. Euphronios Crater This large 18-inch bowl was used for mixing water with wine, and although it might appear to have Greek origins, the country of Italy has made claims to it and demanded for its repatriation. Only a few vases such as this in remarkable condition are said to exist, and this is considered to be one of the finest Greek vase artifacts ever made. The artwork here shows the youth of Athens preparing for battle. On the front side, you see Sarpedon's body being carried by the god of sleep, Hypnos, and the god of death, Thanatos, with Hermes on the side watching. It's in reference to the Trojan War, which we've already seen has a lot of value for any artifact relating to it. The reason Italy thought they had claim to it was because it was discovered in an Etruscan tomb in 1971 and then sold to a black market dealer from Lebanon. Italy was glad to hear the news of Giacomo Medici getting busted for smuggling, which led to an agreement to send back the art in exchange for letting out some of their antiquities to go on exhibition. Number 3. African Artifacts, the Louvre The Louvre is under fire once again for holding and maintaining artifacts from other countries and not wanting to hand them over to the original owners. This includes things such as the sculpture of Nock and this fang mask we see here. But there are over 90,000 pieces of art in museums throughout France that could be going back to Africa. People who are for keeping the art claim that if not properly handled, the priceless artifacts could end up in the hands of corrupt officials who end up selling them anyways. Macron has already approved returning some looted objects under immense pressure. Number 2. The Koh i Noor Diamond So if people just start giving back all the artifacts that were uncovered in other countries, what would come next? Would Africa start demanding that we hand over all the diamonds that were mined there? Would your wife have to give back her wedding ring to its African country of origin? The slope gets even more slippery when one of the world's largest cut diamonds that's a part of the British crown jewels goes under the spotlight. It weighs in at an immense 191 metric carats or 21.12 grams. It was originally cut by the Mughal Empire and most claim that it came from the cooler mine in India. It's likely worth at least 200 million dollars but it's tough to tell for sure. Making its way from the east, the Koh i Noor diamond arrived to the Buckingham Palace in 1850 after India was annexed as a part of the Royal British Empire. Just in the later portion of the 20th century, three different countries had made sovereign claims to the royal jewel. The government of India demanded for the diamond to be returned, claiming that it was illegally stolen from them. In 1976, Pakistan attempted to make a claim to it, saying that it was theirs, and giving it back would be a convincing demonstration of Britain to shed some of their imperial tendencies. And then finally, even the Taliban made a bold attempt to say it was theirs in 2000, saying that they possessed the diamond before India did. So before we get to our number one, tell us your opinion in the comments section. Should countries like France, Germany, the UK, and Russia feel pressure to return plundered artwork to countries of origin? Or will it cause too much of a slippery slope, which will result in everyone wanting everything back? If France decides that they want the Statue of Liberty back, is it time to get her packing? Let us know where you draw the line in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 1. The Winged Victory of Samothrace Created in the image of the winged goddess of victory named Nike, you wouldn't expect a headless statue to cause such a fuss, but it did nonetheless. Currently being held in the Louvre Museum in Paris, it's been described as the greatest example of Hellenistic masterpiece sculpting and the country of Macedonia wants it back already. Measuring in at over 8 feet tall and made from marble, it's not only dedicated to the goddess, but also a victorious naval battle. 
It was discovered in 1863 by a French man on the Aegean island of Samothrace, where it was discovered, to be dismantled and then taken to Paris. It now sits at the Daru staircase inside the museum. In case you were wondering, the pieces of the head and the arms were never found, which almost adds more mystery to it. The mayor of the island of Samothrace began a letter-writing campaign with no avail, ordering for the return of the statue. Greek politics were also encouraged to participate, another request was sent in 2013.